Hey, how you guys doing today? Welcome to another podcast with High Desert Bible Church. Uh, we have a dedication amongst ourselves just to get the Word of God out however we can. And if this is a great platform, uh, then that's what we're going to attempt to do here. So if you're liking what you're hearing, uh, please consider giving us a, a like and a, and a share. And uh, uh, that helps out a lot. It helps out a lot. It's free. It just takes a little time to do it. I understand that. But anyways, thanks for sitting in with me. Hey, listen, um, we want to talk about something today that uh, affects every individual. And um, uh, I think it's imperative that we talk about things that are relative to where you're at today, where I'm at today. And um, there's a passage in the Bible. Uh, we've covered the Bible before, you know, God's word to us. Um, uh, it, it's, it, why is it God's word? Well, it's God's word because it stays steady and it stays the same and it's without change and it, there's no errors in it. And it has the ability, it's a supernatural book that has the ability to change people's lives. Now, historically, you can validate the Bible if you so desire. There's, there's a, a lot of stuff out there that will validate the conicity of the Bible, which means that it's an approved list of books and they put the books together and they, they bind them all together, and you have a, you know, 39 in the old and 27 in the new. And all those in the new had to be done before the end of the uh, first century. So there's some, there's some guideposts, guidelines along the way that makes it secure for us. So I believe the Bible is God, and I believe it's a love story, and I believe it's a love story for you and for me. It's, it's, uh, it, it shows us about relationships. It shows us about how God expects us to live and what to do and how to do it. It extends, it shows us what grace is. It shows us what mercy is. It shows us all those different things uh, that many people don't understand, to be honest with you. Or they try to make them fit their life instead of making their life fit the Bible, right? So one of the things that we probably should talk about, and I chose today to do it, there's an interesting scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verses 3 through 5. And we won't get into all of it, but basically, a paraphrase, it says that in this world, we, we don't fight. We're not fighting, so to speak, uh, uh, with weapons of the flesh. In other words, we're not, we're not literally warring against uh, the spiritual world with things that we could make in the physical world. It doesn't work that way. In fact, you have to battle or fight spiritual things with spiritual weapons. And one of our greatest spiritual weapons is obviously God's word. In the scriptures, it's known as the sword, all right? It's the sword of the spirit in Hebrews 4. Um, and, and in Ephesians 6, it, it gives us some other weapons to use. It gives us uh, a shield that blocks the darts of the enemy. Now, that's what I want to talk about today with regards to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 10, 3 through 5. Specifically, it talks about getting rid of strongholds in our lives. And what's a stronghold? Well, if you watched um, some of the uh, Hobbit-based movies, uh, there was something known as Helm's Deep, and it was a keep. It was this fortified uh, castle that was surrounded, and it, it had um, strong points or strongholds in it that the, the soldiers could sit behind, and there would be peep sites and holes where you could shoot the arrows and etc. But a stronghold had to be built uh, from the outside, and sometimes it's built from the inside. And so when it says in the scripture that we're breaking down strongholds, a stronghold would be something spiritually that has attached itself to your life that you don't seem to be rid of. And what I want to talk specifically about today is the type of strongholds that affect the mind. So if we were going to label it today, we want to talk about... Um, the mind as it pertains to how we live our lives, how we see ourselves, uh, how we live every single day in accordance with our thought life and our thought processes. 
Now, most people would think that their thoughts solely belong to themselves, that maybe God's not concerned about your thought life, or, or, or Satan's not, the devil, Satan's not concerned about your thought life. Maybe you think that, you know, you recognize that, yeah, there is a devil, you see it in the world today, things are going on, and you say to yourself, well, yep, and I'm starting to see that there's a God, I see good things that are going on, and I see this war of good and evil, I see what's going on all the time, I see the lies, I see the deception, and so we, we view people through their actions, but really, what begins the action is the thought life. It's the thought life that we want to be concerned with a little bit today. And yes, God is very interested in your thought life. As much as the devil's interested in your thought life. We could talk about mental health, uh, wellness, so to speak. Are you mentally whole? Are you mentally sound? Are you well within your own mind and your thoughts? Or are you uh, slipping? Are you, are you losing your mind, so to speak? Are you captured by thoughts of negativity? Are you captured by your past and the thoughts won't leave you alone? See, the mind is a very interesting uh, part of our body. And I would tell you that I believe personally that the mind is likened to your soul. Okay, and that you have a spirit inside of you, and that spirit is either dead or alive. Now, we've talked about that before in some of these uh, casts, but that's just safe to say, if, if you're not a Christian today, uh, then you are susceptible to the power of the devil, who is the god of this world, little g, and that he has captured you in your thought life. He tries to convince you that he isn't real. He tries to sway you into doing the things he wants you to do rather than the things you want to do. For example, you may know things that you do are wrong, but you do them anyways. There's no conviction enough. You don't have a conviction. Or, or maybe you say, well, man, I, I feel guilty all the time. Well, where does guilt come from? It's your actions. It's the things that you're thinking. Do your, is your thought life uh, before God good or is it bad? Is it evil? Do you think about wrong things? Do you think about doing bad things? And if you're a Christian out there, um, are you being undermined? Are you constantly being nagged about yesterdays? Are you constantly being reminded of your past? Well, I think today's a great day to introduce the concept that's very helpful when we talk about battling in the mind and, and learning, and this is, here's the catchphrase of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through 5. We need to learn to capture, capture our thoughts. We need to take them captive. We don't let them run amok. We don't let them tell us what to do. Rather, we tell them what to do, and we're in control. They're not in control. And so those are the things that we have to introduce today. And you're unable to do that if you are spiritually dead. You have no power over those things if you're spiritually dead. Now, you can go to different forms of uh, um, psychiatric care, or you can go to doctors. You can go to, uh, you, some people go to philosophers, and they try to understand truth. They try to understand how they think about things. You can get in, into meditations, and you can get into therapies, and you can get into all kinds of things that help you block out things that have happened or recall things in order to be rid of them. But let me tell you something. Those are some dangerous practices when you start dealing with the depths of the mind. Nobody really knows how the mind works. We just simply know that there are uh, uh, pasts in everybody's life, and those pasts uh, infiltrate the present. And those past thought processes, if they were bad or if they were hurtful or if they were negative to a degree that maybe let's, for example, say it this way. Maybe you were raised in a home where the glass was always half empty and, and you could never measure up. 
to maybe your parents or your siblings, you, you always were looked down upon or there was always uh, negative thoughts towards you. Maybe things like you were useless or maybe things like you were worthless or maybe things like you have no value uh, or you, whenever you do something, you do it wrong or you, you don't seem to be able to get it right. Those things can nag you for life. You know, they say that the, the biggest uh, detrimental weapon that we have is the tongue. A, a parent um, inadvertently can say three or four words towards a child and affect that child for life just by the simple words that come out of the mouth. So words are like these daggers. Words are very powerful when used against people. Now, you combine the words of the thought life to the words and from the words to the actions, and then we could find ourselves in a mess. And most people really are broken people. And that's why we cannot save ourselves. That's why Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for us, that he would be a savior to us, saving us from judgment of God for our sins. And sins are anything that's directed towards God that opposes his word. Lying, stealing, cheating, immoralities, sexual fornications, etc. Those things go against God's word. And God's word says don't do those because they're going to hurt you. See, we say, oh, maybe we lie or we embellish. No, really what you're saying is that you're a deceiver. But see, people that lie don't like to say that they're deceivers. Because to deceive somebody is to seduce somebody into thinking something that's really not true. And that's exactly the ploy of the devil. He will always whisper in your mind, in your thought life, something that's not true. And he'll keep reminding you of things to destroy your life until you get a handle of your thought life. And the only way to handle the thought life is to capture. And the only authority that anybody has against the devil is Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ defeated the devil on the cross and was victorious. And so when we say in Jesus' name, devil be gone, he must flee. That's what James 4, 7 says. Stand firm in your faith. Stand firm in what you believe about God. Armor up, Ephesians 6. Stand fast, hold firm. Resist the lies of the devil, resist what he's trying to say to you, resist the thought patterns, resist the old nagging thoughts of yesterday, and in Jesus' name, by the blood of Christ, make him flee. Now, I have no authority and power over the devil other than the authority and power Jesus Christ gives me inside. So we don't battle the devil on his terms, we battle the devil through Jesus Christ on Christ's terms, right? Okay. So now let's talk about the yesterdays and tomorrows because I think it's relative and it's simple to understand. You had a yesterday and I had a yesterday. Matter of fact, yesterday was yesterday. <laughs> All right? Okay. Well, let's go back in time to those yesterdays. Do those yesterdays, the days of your past, do they infiltrate the present and do they continuously mess with you? Do they cause you duress? Do they call you in, cause you insecurities? Do they cause you to be different and insecure and inferior and all those things that come with it? God's plan is that not you live like that under this big hammer under somebody's thumb. Rather that you would understand that yesterday was yours. It was. Your yesterdays all belong to you. And sadly, they still belong to you until you come to a place of a willingness to bow your knee and say, Jesus, I need you to take my past and make me a new creation. I need you to put my past away from my life because you know what? I started bad, but I'm going to finish well. And so there's two days that, that a man one time spoke about and he called those days golden days. And the first golden day that you absolutely have nothing that you can change is yesterday. Yesterday is a golden day. I cannot go back to yesterday. I can't take my words back. I can't take my actions back. All I can do is give those things to Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive me of the things that I did that assaulted him 
that, that assaulted God. And that if I would bow my knee and ask him to forgive me for those things that assaulted him, he will. His grace is sufficient for us. His grace covers us. His grace is waiting for us. And so when I surrender my golden day of yesterday into the hands of Jesus Christ, guess what he does? He gladly takes it. And the scripture says that he takes all my old yesterdays that were sinful and harmful, not only to me, but to him, towards him, and he throws them as far as east as west. In other words, the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 43 at verse 25, it specifically says, God speaking through the prophet Isaiah, I, even I, for my own sake, forgive and forget your trespasses and remember them no more. Now, wouldn't that be amazing if you could take all your yesterdays that you're not too proud about, if you could take all the yesterdays that seem to sneak up on and remind you just exactly how bad or how worse you were, if you could be done with those, would you do it? And then once they were reminded, if you could stand on God's word and say, nope, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Christ, I'm forgiven. That no longer applies to me. And you oppose the devil and he has to flee because of the blood of Christ. Would that give you liberty in your mind? Would that set you free from the negativities and the past of what you did in your ignorance and what I did in my ignorance? I didn't know. I didn't know that there was a loving God that loved me. Most people start their lives in sin, one way or another. Even religious people sin. Even religious people can use their own religion to get away with what they think they're getting away with. And so we don't want to play that game. So back to this golden day. Christ promises me that I can be a new creation in Christ. And if I'm a new creation in Christ, I will take on the mind of Christ and I will take on the spirit of a living God inside of me. And I will be a new creation. And therefore, one of the golden days in my life was my yesterday. And my yesterday has no power over me anymore. I recall the good things. I recall good memories. Uh, I, once in a while, I recall a memory, but it no longer affects me the way it used to. I by Jesus Christ's strength and might and the Holy Spirit living in me, have put my past behind me. He doesn't remember it, and I don't want to remember it anymore either. So that's the first golden day that's going to help you with your thought process. Now the next day is what's known as the second golden day, and it's a day that you have nothing to do about as well. And you know what day that is? It's tomorrow. Yeah. So many people stress out over tomorrow. So many people worry about tomorrow. So many people get wrapped up in anxieties and the cares of the world and worry. Some people have panic attacks over tomorrow or a meeting they have to have or something that's going to happen in the following weeks. Look it. Is tomorrow here today? No. Tomorrow hasn't arrived yet, has it? No. So therefore, it's not yours, is it? Why do I say that? Do you realize, do I realize, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't even know what's going to happen in the next 10 seconds. But I know who does. And I know that the Bible says that Jesus said, take no thought of tomorrow, for today has enough problems of its own. That's a true statement. And so if I don't have to worry about yesterday's one golden day, and if I don't have to worry about tomorrow because it's not mine yet, it hasn't been given to me, second golden day, I'm left with one particular day that I can master and that I can overcome with and that I can defeat all the powers of the enemy and I can take my thoughts captive and I can keep my head above water and I can stay in the word of God and I can be praying and pursuing his face and I can sit quietly with him and I can learn to pray and learn to read and learn to get to know God the way that God knows me. What day is that? Today. Today. You can win today. 
<clears throat> when things cross my mind and it's going to tear me down, I get rid of it in the name of Jesus Christ. I can armor up today. I can win the battles today. I can win the skirmishes today. I can take my thoughts captive today. I can be victorious in Christ today. I can be an overcomer. I can be filled with joy. I can be kind. I can be loving and compassionate. I can learn to love people. I can even learn to like people with the love of God in my heart. It's very difficult to function today if yesterday and tomorrow are in my head. I cannot see clear. And so the best way to rid yourselves of the spaghetti feeling and the spider webs of yesterday and tomorrow is to give them back to where they belong. And they belong, one, to Jesus Christ, if you'll surrender yesterdays, and two, if you'll trust him for your tomorrows. So you know what happens when you trust him with your yesterdays, he forgives you. So there are no tomorrows, so to speak. Save the good. And if you'll trust him in his timing and in his sovereignty and his control, he'll give you tomorrow if it's in accordance with his will. Every day that I wake up, I thank the Lord that I awoke. Do you? Do you thank the Lord that you get another shot or another day? You get to do it one more day? You get to see your friends. You get to see people that you enjoy and love and care about because they love and care about you as well. I cannot stress to you the danger of holding on to yesterdays and worrying about tomorrows. They cause despair, right? And despair uh, has a brother named fear. And he has a brother named anxiety. And he has a brother named hurt. And he has a brother named fatigue. And he has a, a brother named exhaustion. And he has a brother of, named alcoholism and, and drug abuse and, and, and anorexia and bulimia. All because we're trying to think and make ourselves okay in a world that's broken. Only Jesus Christ can make you okay. Only Jesus Christ can forgive the things you've done and, for, and allow you to forgive the people that have done things to you. Forgiveness is the strongest, if not the strongest, weapon in our arsenal. That's right. To forgive those that have hurt us removes the ammunition out of the chamber, so to speak. If you forgive and you're not holding on, it can't hurt you. But here's where it has to start. You have to consider who Jesus Christ is, and you have to consider what God did for you because of his love for you. He covers you with undeserved favor. We deserve damnation, but God gives us his favor. You know that God's waiting for you. It's a prayer of faith. It's a, it's, it takes faith to believe that God loves you. It takes faith to believe that God did something for you. It takes faith to believe that God's willing and waiting and watching with his arms wide open for you. If you'll just bow your knee to Jesus Christ in the real way. Listen, forget about church for a minute and forget about going to church and forget about all the stuff associated. Forget about everything other than one thing, Jesus Christ. Do you believe that God loved you enough to send Jesus Christ to die on a cross for your sins? Comes down to that faith. If you believe it and you receive that into your life by asking, by repentance, Lord God, I have sinned against you and you alone. Forgive me. I open my soul to you. I open my heart to you that you would come in, that you would sup with me, and that you'd hold to my heart. And that today, today would be the first day of the rest of my life. That my yesterdays would be gone and my tomorrows I'm not going to worry about. And I'll read your word 
I'm going to pray, and I'm going to get into fellowship, and I'm going to begin living the way that you want me to live with a wholesome outlook and a healthy way of looking at things. For being born again, you will have the mind of Christ. And the things that plagued you at one time will no longer plague you. God bless you guys today, and I truly hope you'll consider that prayer of faith to Jesus Christ for your life. God bless you guys.